The next item of business is a statement by Fergus Ewing on supporting farming and food production in Scotland. The Cabinet Secretary will take questions at the end of his statement and there should therefore be no interventions or interruptions. Cabinet Secretary, 10 minutes please. Thank you, President Officer. I'm pleased to update Parliament on the support this Government provides for farming and for food production in Scotland. We are now very close to completing the last of the 2015 direct support payments to farmers and crofters. And I remain absolutely determined to ensure that every farmer and crofter due a payment for 2015 receives it in full. On basic and greening payments, £2 million more has been paid out since statistics were published last week, and approximately 18,000 farmers and crofters have now received a payment. There is now a maximum of 350 who have not yet received the 2015 payment. A few will be ineligible. Most others have received a loan. The number awaiting a balanced payment additional to their first payment is down to 100. Payments under the beef and sheep schemes will be completed this week. As I indicated on 13 September, we had hoped to start Elfast payments in September. Unfortunately, the technical issues advised of then have continued, and we will not now be in a position to begin Elfast payments until later this autumn. It is useful for members to remember, however, that 11,000 farmers entitled to an Elfast payment have already received loans worth £54 million. However, rapid progress is being made to implement the 2016 loans scheme. Letters inviting 7,324 farmers and crofters to apply for a loan were sent last week. As already advised through a parliamentary question answered on Monday and a topical question answered yesterday, Manual checking of a sample of calculations uncovered an undervaluation which affected some potential applicants. The farmers and crofters significantly affected by this undervaluation have now been written to again to advise them of their revised loan offer. Presiding officer, every member should note that no farmer or crofter will be worse off as a result of this. The error is regrettable and I apologize to anyone affected but immediate steps have been taken to rectify matters. The deadline for applying for a loan has been extended to 19th of October for those affected, in other words, by a week. Officials have advised that all applications received by then will receive their full loan entitlement within the first half of November. This loan scheme, which will inject up to 300 million pounds into Scotland's rural economy this winter, will ensure that farmers and crofters have funding before the date at which they could normally expect to receive their cap payments for 2016. Clearly, cap pillar one payments form the cornerstone of government support for farming and food production in Scotland, but funding provided under pillar two of the CAP also makes a vital contribution. On Monday, I announced 8.8 .8 million pounds funding for food processing with a visit to McQueen's Dairies, a family-run business. Their grant, uh, part of that is to purchase new equipment which will enable the business to, go, to grow whilst protecting livelihoods amongst their workers but also amongst dairy farmers. This support contributes to the ongoing success of our food and drink sector which enjoyed record turnover of £14.4 billion in 2014, well on the way, presiding officer, to meeting the target of £16.5 billion for 2017. That will be further aided by the development of a national food and drink hub with key partners next year. On 1st of September, I announced £11.4 million to support investment of up to £48 million in sea fisheries, aquaculture and processing industries. That coincided with the first rural summit with the farmed shellfish sector. Further summits are planned this winter to consider challenges and opportunities in supply chains, in farming and planning, and in the finfish aquaculture sector. Presenting also, while I'm doing all that I can to support how we currently farm and produce food, it's also vital that we look to the future. That is why I'm focused on ensuring the sustainability of farming in Scotland. The fact that over two thirds of Scottish beef breeding herd have signed up to the new beef efficiency scheme indicates that farmers share that focus. Sustainability is also about growing markets. 
Officials are now analysing responses to our consultation on seeking BSE negligible risk status, which will benefit livestock farmers and potentially many food processing businesses. We also continue to support collaboration among Scotland's vets, amongst our research institutes and our FE and HE institutions to address the problems of antimicrobial resistance in animals and livestock. This is not just a well-being issue, but also an economic one, enabling more efficient and more profitable food production in the long term. Signing off, sir, people are also key to the future of farming and food production. Uh, this morning, I was privileged uh, to attend a workshop as part of the development of our vision for Scottish agriculture and speak to young farmers after attending a meeting of the cooperative farm stock and addressing some of their members. At the Royal Highland Show this year, key emerging themes for this vision were published and today's workshop focused on what is arguably the most important, ensuring that agriculture is recognised as a rewarding career accessible to new entrants and young entrants. That is why I recently announced £7 million funding to help create and develop around 140 new farming businesses across Scotland. In my many conversations with people involved in farming and food production across the country, a recurrent issue is the need to encourage children and young people to recognise that a career in farming and food production and the many varied ancillary functions which support it is a good choice for them to make. The fact that five out of the 24 recommendations in the John Scott's Scottish Sheep Sector Review relate to education and training underpins this. The vital statistics that the average age of farmers is now 58 confirm the urgency with which we need to act. Uh, today's workshop brought together education providers to share what works well in supporting young people who are considering or have chosen agriculture as a career. This will augment the support this government already provides in this area. £35,000 to the Royal Highland Educational Trust for 18 food and farming events for approximately 4,000 school pupils and to involve 300 primary pupils in farmers' market projects. £420,000 annually to Lantra to work with schools and colleges to identify skills gaps and provide modern apprenticeships. Over £10 million annually to Scotland's Rural College for teaching on subjects relating to farming and food production. We also know that informal support delivered by young people to other young people makes a positive difference. So I'm announcing today additional funding of £20,000 to Scotland's young farmers to create a peer support network in rural communities to complement existing careers advice for young people so that more choose subjects and courses at school and beyond which lead to careers in farming and food production, add value to existing activities which explain routes into working in farming and food production, and provide mentoring and buddying for young people taking on or starting a farm. Presiding officer, we must get the direct support for farming and food production in Scotland right. I remain utterly focused on achieving that. We are working flat out still to complete the 2015 cap payments, to implement the 2016 loan scheme, and to put the 2016 cap payments onto a proper footing. But additional support also helps to drive forward Scotland's rural economy and is all the more important during these most uncertain of times. That uncertainty means that this government is not waiting for decisions to be made for us about rural Scotland's future. Instead, through direct and indirect support for current and future farming and food production, we are getting on with the job of making rural Scotland's future. The Cabinet Secretary will now take questions on the issues raised in his statement, and I intend around 20 minutes to so do. After that, we'll move on to the next item of business. It would be helpful if members who wish to ask a question could press the request to speak buttons now. And I call on Peter Chapman. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. And can I thank the Cabinet Secretary for advance sight of his statement and remind the Chamber of my farming interests in the register. Presiding Officer, once again, the Cabinet Secretary has been dragged to this chamber to explain his inability to get money to the farming community. 
money which is rightfully theirs and is desperately needed. I remind the Cabinet Secretary that when he was appointed to his new role, that he promised this chamber that getting this IT system sorted was his first priority and that he was gone to get in about it. Let me tell him that he has failed miserably. There has been no step change in the speed that the money has gone out. It continues to flow at a snail's pace. And I make no apologies for repeating that this debacle has caused more hurt, heartbreak and worry to the farming community than any other single issue in the last generation. It has meant families all Can across rural Scotland please, Mr. sitting Chapman? around... Sorry. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just nearly there. I think this is important. Could you hurry up? It has meant families sitting around kitchen tables worried sick about how they are going to pay their bills. That is the reality. And I repeat my question of yesterday, which the Cabinet Secretary completely failed to answer. The question is this. Why are only 17,324 farmers being offered a loan under this scheme out of 18,300 businesses eligible for cap payments? And are these 1,000 businesses the same businesses that are still awaiting substantial amounts of money from the 2015 scheme? Well, in answer, let me just introduce a few facts. First of all, in respect of the 215 payments, 97 per cent, let me repeat that, 97 per cent of all basic payments have been settled in full. That is all but 3 per cent. I want those 3 per cent to be settled in full if they're eligible, but 97 per cent, I think, is not quite in accordance with the tone of Mr. Chapman's speech. All but four, presiding officer, another fact, all but four of the 1,099 SUS, that's the sheep scheme, payments have been paid in full. All but nine of the 7,314 Scottish Suckler Beef Support Scheme payments have been paid in full. 54 million out of the total 66 million LFAS payments have been paid in full. I absolutely understand that many farmers and crofters have suffered difficulties, some of them seriously. That remains my view. I will not be satisfied until everyone is paid in full. But I can tell Mr Chapman this. When I was at uh, Farmstock this morning, speaking to actual farmers that are still farming, not sitting in here making speeches about farming, then I can tell you what they said. What they said, presiding officer, is this. They said that they thought that the national loan scheme, which will inject £300 million into the rural economy, was a very sensible measure. What a shame the Tories don't get it. Roger Grant. Question twice. I have had no response whatsoever to my question, none whatsoever tonight, today. Twice I've asked it and I have no response. That is not a point of order. If you have a problem with that, Mr Chapman, you can write to the government. Rhoda Grant. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Can I also thank the Cabinet Secretary for prior sight of the statement? I also understand that an independent technical assurance review will now take place of the IT system and welcome that. But can I ask him what help he's giving to the 350 people who have received nothing so far? And can I further ask um, what, um, wh what further information he can give if the IT system proves incapable of delivering um, and whether there is an, a disaster recovery scheme in place because this must never happen again. Fergus Ewing. Uh, well, those are very sensible questions, presiding officer, and let me answer them in turn. First of all, in respect of the 350 cases, uh, as I said in my statement, uh, the majority of those will already have received loans of the majority of their entitlement, but we are working through those remaining 350 cases which are waiting full payment, depending upon confirmation of eligibility. And I can assure you that, that that work is going on at the moment. The member also asked quite fairly about the computer system. Uh, and let me say this, that uh, this is the top priority for me to resolve. 
uh, along with senior officials. We are busting a gut to do so. Uh, we are working with the contractor uh, in a productive fashion. We have seen a great deal of progress. We have seen many, many of the problems addressed successfully with what is called IT fixes. Progress is going on apace as we speak. Uh, since the PAC meeting, two million pounds of payments have been processed. I expect that most of the rest of the full payment process will be processed by the end of October. Yes, there are difficulties, the member fairly points them out, but I am confident, presiding officer, that in accordance with the timetable that I indicated in my last full statement, we will sort these problems out and we will do so in the early part of next year. Uh, can I say to the Chamber that there are many, many members who wish to ask questions. We will get through more of them if people keep their uh, questions and the Minister responds as succinctly as possible. Emma Harper to be followed by, I nearly forgot, Finlay Carson. Thank you, President Officer. I certainly appreciate that everything is being done to remedy matters, but it could be confusing for some. Can the Cabinet Secretary clarify what people need to do about their first letter and about their second letter that they received in order to make sure and apply for a loan? And can he also advise what will happen with those not currently el eligible for a loan? Fergus Ewing. Uh, yes, uh, th those uh, who receive a loan offer should return the slip if they wish to accept it. Uh, those in respect of whom the undervaluation was made will be contacted by the local office they will receive a second letter and they should return the opt-in slip. They should seek to do so by the 19th of October deadline. If they return the opt-in slip from the second letter, they do not need to return the first opt-in slip. Uh, they should, of course, if they wish, contact the area office. Both of the letters have details about who should be contacted. The ARPID website also contains extremely useful information, as most farmers will know. Uh, and that is also a useful port of call. We want to ensure that all of these payments are uh, made by uh, the, in the, uh, the bulk of the payments rather, to be made in the first fortnight in November, and that is what we seek to do. Uh, we estimate that there may be a further 800 loan offers that we will seek to make. These fall into various categories, entitlement cases, private contract cases, cross-border cases, and cases where we feel there may not be eligibility. What I would say about all of these, presiding officer, is that we are busting a gut to make sure that if as many people as possible who are entitled to a loan will get a loan, and that includes everybody except those, of course, who are ineligible under the rule schemes. My officials are working flat out including overtime, which is a sensible measure, in order to ensure that every farmer can get a loan under this scheme if he or she is so entitled. That will involve a lot of detailed work, but I'm determined that it be carried out, and it is being carried out. Finlay Carson, followed by Claudia Beamish. Uh, presiding officer, this is becoming a bit like Groundhog Day, with the Cabinet Secretary regularly appearing to apologise for the continued technical issues. Mr Ewing told our, the members that we should refer our issues to the local office. I was advised that payments are being made by the local office and sent to central payment teams in Edinburgh. Farmers are being told that payments are being approved and given dates for payments, but no money has been forthcoming. An example, since no, May... No, we don't have time for examples. Can we have a question, please? Since May 2016, one farmer in, in Dumfries and Galloway has been advised on five separate occasions that their payment will be made by the end of the week. And on five separate occasions, this has not been the case. May we have a question, please, Mr Carson? This is questions on a statement. Thank you, President Officer. In the words of Mr Ewing's colleague, Alec Neil, this has been a fiasco. It has been a total failure. So why has there not been a price to pay for that failure? Fergus Ewing. For me to say, Presiding Officer, that 97% of the payments, the claims, have been paid in full. I think, really, the rhetoric is a bit past its sell-by date. But let me say to Mr Carson, as I... Well, let me say to Mr Carson, you know, he could have supplied me, Presiding Officer, with the detail of this case before this chamber. If he wanted a detailed answer, I would have given it to him. If you give me the individual case, or any member does, I will look into it, but he didn't do that. He came here and he talks about one case without going to circumstances. Not really very good practice, but I guarantee that I will look into the case as soon as I receive a relevant request so to do. Claudia Beamish, followed by Mark Ruskell. 
Thank you, Presiding Officer. £20,000 additional funding to Scotland's young farmers for a peer support network is welcome. However, what is the Scottish Government doing to identify more starter farms for new entrants? And what indeed is the Scottish Government doing to develop the contribution of organics and eco-agriculture, agroforestry and local supply chains, which will help the next generation of farmers to tackle climate change? Fergus Ewing. Well, again, all very, very fair points, I have to say, from the Labour Party today. Uh, and uh, we work very, very carefully and closely with the organic sector. I met the Soil Association recently. We're engaging with them again. Plainly, they're a niche market, they're a, but they're an important uh, part of the farming. You ask about uh, further work to identify land for young entrants. I'm convening a meeting with all public bodies that may have land available in order to ascertain whether we can do more. Uh, I would refer, of course, uh, to the instance of the Forestry Commission, who have a scheme which has helped young entrants. I met several of them at the Royal Highland Show, Ingolston, on the 23rd June. And just this morning, I had a, a very interesting discussion and dialogue with four young farmers precisely about these matters and how we help them make a success of ent entering into farms. So, uh, so I'm delighted that we're doing this work. But of course, there is a lot more to be done, uh, and uh, we are getting on with it. Mark Ruskell to be followed by Mike Rumbles. Thank you. Uh, Cabinet Secretary, you said on the 13th of September that your work to support agri-environment schemes was, I quote, literally impossible because of the lack of clarity from the UK Government on Pillar 2 and the Rural Development Programme. Well, we've now had that clarity this week on Monday. UK Government's announced that farmers are eligible for funds up to the point of Brexit. So when are we actually going to get a definitive statement from the Scottish Government about your commitment, your commitment to Pillar 2 and agri-environment funds, or is it actually Mr Mackay who's now creating the uncertainty and the problems? Fergus Ewing. Well, let, let's just get to the facts here. Uh, we have not had clarity from the UK Government about Pillar 2. We have been seeking clarity about Pillar 2 payments uh, since the day after Brexit. Pillar 2 payments, of course, support agri-environment schemes, forestry, forestry, LFAS, absolutely vital to support vulnerable communities and to support valuable greening schemes. I agree with that. But the statement that we had yesterday, a very brief statement, begs far more questions than it answers. It doesn't say what happens between March 2019 and 220, one whole year of the SRDP programme, and according to a leading member of the farming community just yesterday, the uncertainty still remains. But I do pledge this. As soon as we receive certainty, clear facts about continuance of funding, all of the funding under Pillar 2, then we would be in a position to provide and to consider providing the guarantees that, the, that, uh, that so many people in the rural economy desperately seek. Mike Rumbles to be followed by Stuart Stevenson. <coughs> On Thursday, his Director General said in evidence to the Audit Committee that their review of the current system, and I quote, could conclude that it is absolutely fine and that we should just continue as we are, unquote. Does the Minister not accept that continuing with the current system is simply not an option, that he needs to start planning now for a new Scottish system of farm support post-2020 when we will be, have left the EU and the responsibility for such a system will be entirely his. Will he set up a group of civil servants to look at the options for the future post-2020? Fergus Ewing. Uh, we've been working on this for a very long time. We've set up a team of civil servants working on this a long time ago. Uh, over, well, there he goes again, barracking from the back benches, Mr Rumbles, as always. But let me just continue to try to answer his question. In 2015, at the Royal Highland Show, we set out a debate about the future of agriculture in this country. We received lots of responses, lots of responses from people in the countryside. We didn't get a response from Mr. Rumbles right enough, but he is making his voice uh, audible, at least now. Uh, what I can say is that his criticisms of us in respect of the f flaws in the CAP policy, particularly slipper farming, are way, way, way off the mark. Members will, re will recall them the other day. And of course, we didn't hear that it was the Liberal Democrats in the form of Alastair Carmichael who in a press statement in November uh, 2013 praised the common agricultural policy with the slipper farmer payments. He said it was the best result Scotland could ever get. So there we have it, same old Liberal Democrats. One thing from one side and one thing from another side, a.k.a. Mr Rumbles. Stuart Stevenson to be followed by Douglas Ross.
Given the importance of both primary and processed food can, uh, production in my constituency, can I very much welcome the announcements that the Cabinet Secretary has made about uh, supporting the food industry. But can he advise of any steps he can take or the UK Government may be contemplating to protect these industries' access to labour from other parts of the EU upon which they are critically dependent? Fergus well, this is an extremely serious matter, and in all the visits I've, I've made to farms and to, to co-ops, such as great co-ops, uh, uh, such as uh, uh, Aberdeen Grain, such as Ringlink, such as Grampian Growers, whether it's in raspberries, whether it's in tatty picking, uh, whether it's in a whole range of jobs in the rural community, we are relying on people who come from the EU to work here, who choose to do so, who are welcome here, and also many of whom who are migrant workers. The fact is, and Stuart Stevenson knows this from his own constituency in respect of fish processing, that we are utterly reliant on the goodwill of people who are welcome in this country. The announcements emerging from the Conservative uh, Conference are of the most right-wing reactionary variety I've ever heard in 17 years of politics. They are quite shocking and quite disgraceful. Douglas Ross, we followed by Colin Smith. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. As a former chairman of Lower Speyside Young Farmers in Murray, I noted the announcement of uh, £20,000 for Scotland's young farmers. This followed the Scottish Government's decision in January to end the SAYFC annual grant of £66,000 and to reinstate less than half of that following pressure from the sector. Can the Cabinet Secretary confirm that the money now being provided to young farmers is still less than last year and will he give a commitment to re reinstating the regular grant to young farmers in future years. Fergus Ewing. Uh, well, well I'm, I'm sorry to disappoint the, the young farmer, but uh, I, I can reassure him that I was just speaking to a group of young farmers this morning and was able to confirm the very substantial support that the Scot well, there we go again, that the Scottish Government have been, have been delivering and this year, and I'm very happy to write with the full details uh, to the member for his benefit. And of course, we want to help young farmers. And by helping young farmers, we want them to have access to the single market. We want them to be able to hire people that come from Europe uh, and are happy to do so, not send them away and say that they're unwelcome in this country. Colin Smith to be followed by Gail Ross. Thank, thank you, Deputy President Officer. I'll continue the, the, the hopefully reasonable line of questioning from the Labour uh, Benches Cabinet Secretary. But bear in mind that we are, we are now into October, Cabinet Secretary. C can you clarify a date when he expects all farmers waiting for LFAS payments to have received a loan? Can he clarify, for example, how many of the 11,000 farmers entitled to an LFAS payment have received a CAP payment? How many of those 11,000 have had their LFAS payment delayed but received a loan? And how many of the 11,000 have neither received a cap payment nor a loan? Fergus um, Ewing. I'm, I'm sorry, I wasn't quite sure whether he was talking about Elfast solely. Was he talking about Elfast? Okay, uh, the, the number of, of claims to pay are estimated 11,500. The total due is 66 million. Of that, 54 million approximately has been paid. We are working, as I said in the statement, very hard to deliver the remaining IT fixes to enable payment processing to be begun. Progress has already been made with some elements of the IT fixes in order to deliver the LFAS payments. As I said in my opening statement, I believe, uh, I can check this presiding officer and write to the member if, I, if my memory is incorrect, uh, we plan to make all of those payments in autumn of this year. But mindful of the fact that all of these payments are the remaining 20%, because uh, in almost every case, uh, uh, those making the claims will have received a loan of around 80%. So it's not perfect, it's not satisfactory. I recognise that, but my pledge to those involved is that uh, by the end of the autumn, we will have completed uh, uh, those payments if we possibly can. And if there's any further difficulty, of course, I will, as always do, report back to Parliament. And I'm sure I won't be short of opportunities so to do. Gail Ross, followed by Edward Mountain. Thank you, President Officer. As also an ex-member of Bower Young Farmers, I welcome the announcement of additional farm funding for Young Farmers Clubs, and I hope that those in my constituency will benefit. Can the Cabinet Secretary advise how this new initiative will work with established formal routes provided by the likes of the SRUC and the UHI? 
Fergus Ewing. Uh, well, yes, I was at a workshop this morning with young farmers and the SRUC, and uh, I know that they, they have good working relationships. We'll take that forward uh, uh, with them. Uh, I would also say to Gail Ross that uh, we do appreciate very much the support of banks for young entrants. I was struck by the real enthusiasm that people in the banking community themselves, very embedded in the rural community in Scotland, go out of their way to provide mentoring for young people, which can even be more important than provision of finance, the right kind of mentoring and finance. So I would take uh, this opportunity to very much welcome the positive uh, role played by the banks and many others in helping those young people. We have gone over the 20 minutes, but I can squeeze in uh, Edward, Mount Edward Mountain if he's brief. Uh, as instructed, I'll be brief, and I'd like to thank the Cabinet Secretary for giving me sight of his speech and also declare an interest that I am part of the Farming Partnership. Last week, the Director General said that it was no one's fault, the problems with the, cap, with the cap payments. It was optimism bias on behalf of the government. I'm not sure what that means, but I'd like to ask the Minister a simple question. Without any optimum bias, when will the final 20% of the 2016-7 payment worth about 60 to 80 million pounds be paid for farmers? What I'd like, Minister, is an equally quick answer, a month and the year, please. Uh, well, I think uh, if I heard him correctly, he's referring to the 216 17, not 215. No, 216 17. Well, 216 17 is, is, is next year. Uh, and I've already covered that in the statement that I made to Parliament uh, before. But I think there's an element of confusion in the question, so I'll be happy to write to the member if he so wishes. That ends the statement and questions on supporting farming and food production in Scotland.